There's been a lot of hype surrounding the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max's ability to record in ProRes Apple Log, and quite rightly so. It makes the footage from the camera look so much better than the iPhone has ever been able to capture. In this video, I will be talking about my experiences with it and the apps and filters that I use. These are essential to getting great video with Apple Log. Smartphones have been capable of shooting very good video and photos for years. There are several videos that are shot with various phones on this channel, both Androids and iPhones, and shots from them frequently pop up in multiple reviews. Whilst there have been improvements year on year, they still look like phone videos. The best looking footage for me has been with the Sony Xperia Pro i, which looks more like a real camera's video. Not quite, but easily the closest. The Xperia 1 5 also looks good and can shoot in S-Cinetone. Their image processing is a lot gentler than that of other phones. Whilst we can shoot raw photos with most of them, we haven't been so fortunate with video. The vast majority of phones really process the crap out of photos and videos, some more than others. With a raw photo, you can get a much more natural looking image. The video over processing tends to have way too much sharpening. It's one of the biggest problems, as well as heavy noise reduction and sometimes really unnatural tone mapping. Most users don't see this as a problem. Most like that look. I don't. Film Convert Nitrate has been an essential part of my workflow to try to make phone video look more natural using softening and film grain. I would be lost without it. In the past couple of years, I've also used Topaz Video Enhance AI, which has been fantastic with fixing compression issues. And I also use it alongside Film Convert Nitrate to bring down that over sharpening. When Apple brought out the iPhone 13 Pro, the big video headline feature was that it could shoot in ProRes. But unfortunately, it was mostly pointless. All the same over-processing was there, the same unnatural HDR, and the same really nasty over-sharpening. Really zoomed in, there is a bit more detail due to being less compressed, but the benefits are tiny for such massively bigger files. Apple Log is totally different though. Whilst there is still some in camera sharpening, noise reduction and tone mapping, it's drastically reduced. So much so that the footage from it can look beautiful and unphone like for the first time. It really is that amount of sharpening that is key. If you're recording anything but Apple Log, even with the other apps, that over sharpening is still baked in. You have to record in Apple Log for the phone to bring it right down. There are still four main things that kind of hold it back though. First is it's still the huge ProRes HQ. The second is the built-in camera app has no manual control for exposure and white balance. The third is the app cannot have a display LUT on when you're filming in log. It's very dim and it could be really hard to make out what's going on, especially if it's sunny. The last big thing is not software, but hardware. And this has always been the case. You need ND filters to control the amount of light coming in. The cameras are fixed apertures, of course, and no matter how nice the image looks, if the shutter speed is too fast and there's movement in the frame, you're not gonna get natural motion blur that you need. That's where the excellent pan scheme MagSafe snap filter system comes in, either with their slot in filters or their screw on filter adapter. I made a video about these filters last year with the iPhone 14 Pro Max. The various fixed NDs and diffusion filters helped me get some nice looking footage. I still needed to use Film Convert Nitrate a fair bit and Topaz due to that over processing, but getting that shutter speed slowed down makes a world of difference. They have a lightweight case for the iPhone 15 Pro, 
which the MagSafe filter holder snaps onto, so you don't have to use the phone naked like I did with the 14 Pro at the time. They've also got an excellent Bluetooth hand grip. This makes holding the phone so much nicer. Filter-wise, other than the fixed NDs, as diffusion filters, polarizers, street filters, and other effect filters, like the star one. Really, for me, it's just about the NDs and diffusion. They're such a slick and slim way of adding filters that cover all three cameras. And the quality of the glass is excellent. You can leave them on without bulking out your phone. When using the built-in camera app, as well as the lack of manual controls, you are limited to 4K ProRes HQ up to 30p, no higher. Thanks to the iPhone 15 having USB Type-C now, you can plug in an SSD and record straight to that drive up to 4K 60p. I only shoot Apple Log with these apps, as they are so much better, but each have their pros and cons. First off, the Blackmagic one is free, which is of course a huge plus, unlike ProTake, which uses the dreaded subscription model like Filmic Pro. With both these apps, I can shoot in Apple Log in the much more usable ProRes LT, as well as many other codecs and variations of ProRes. Full manual control over everything naturally, including focus. You can bring that shutter speed down by using the right strength ND and keeping the ISO as low as possible. Both apps have various excellent stabilization options. I tend to stick to the standard one as the others have lag, but they are useful at times when you want to be almost tripod-like for shots. Everything you are seeing with the iPhone 15 Pro Max in this video was shot and held. Both apps let you shoot with LUTs on, which really helps a lot. Although ProTake will only let you do this up to 4K 30p. Blackmagic app doesn't have this limitation and lets you import LUTs, which is great, as my favorite one is the ProLOS one, which is what I use to grade with in post. It's more subtle than the standard Apple LUT and has a nicer highlight roll off. You can also record the LUT, which is useful for quick turnaround stuff that won't see a computer. One of my favorite improvements with the iPhone 15 Pro is when you switch between the cameras whilst recording, it does this optically. Previous iPhones would digitally zoom when going from a wide to a tighter lens, unless you stopped recording first. The ProTech app requires you to stop recording to switch, which I hope they will fix as the Blackmagic app lets you switch whilst recording. Although, it lacks the two times option that the standard and ProTech app have. This is done by sampling the 48 megapixel quad bear sensor one to one. The lack of the two times in the Blackmagic app is the biggest negative for me with it. I hope they address this. I tend to shoot 99% with the main camera and with the two times mode, as they give by far the best looking image. The sensor is a Sony 1 over 1.3 inch IMX803. The same as the iPhone 14 Pro, just with much better processing. The ultra wide and three times or five times zoom cameras, depending on which version of the Pro you have, are good, but the sensors are much smaller. Don't expect any shallow depth of field from the telephoto lens. The f2.8 is relative to the optics of the sensor size. In full frame terms, yeah, it's kind of equivalent to around f22 for depth of field purposes. The only shallow depth of field you will get is with the main camera, especially close up shots. In low light, the primary camera does pretty well. Just be careful not to push that ISO too high and use the app's exposure tools to ensure you aren't losing too much in shadows. Remember, log profiles don't like to be underexposed, so expose, holding the highlights if you can, but don't push that ISO too much to get there. If you are using telephoto or ultra wide in low light with Apple Log, be very careful. If you're underexposed, especially at night, then it will look terrible. Trying to increase your ISO isn't going to help. Both of these cameras need to have the ISO as low as possible to avoid ugly looking noise and artifacts. And these you won't be able to fix in post. Those tiny sensors can only do so much. 
Some in camera noise reduction is still being applied and I have lost some detail in shots because of it. When shooting in low light where you need to raise the ISO above 800 or so, stick to the main camera due to the larger quad Bayer sensor which makes pixels larger by combining them which means they can absorb more light. This is why the two times mode using the same sensor really suffers as it doesn't combine them. So the pixels are one quarter the size. You really can see Apple's noise reduction and added sharpening and the results end up being quite mushy as you can see. In case you're wondering, Apple Log cannot be used with cinematic mode. Maybe one day we will see that. As slick as the snap filters are, there are times when you want to use your own filters. After all, I released my own Bloom Gold Diffusion filters earlier this year with Format High Tech, and they are absolutely beautiful. They work so well, the iPhone and Apple Log. Using the Snap Filters 52mm adapter, I use a step up ring to get up to my 67mm Bloom Gold one quarter. It doesn't cover the ultra wide though, that you need to be pretty flush to the lens like these snap filters are. I was able to use the excellent 67mm Nisi True Color Variable ND stacked onto it to give me fine control of exposure. Apple Log with the iPhone 15 Pro really is now the best looking video from a phone. Just make sure you use the third party apps to get the best out of it. Of course, it doesn't replace a proper large sensor camera with proper lenses, but it can easily be cut alongside footage from those now. It was so nice to spend a few hours walking and filming from Waterloo Station to Covent Garden using only my iPhone. It was one of the most pleasant filming experiences I've had in a long time. It felt really freeing, so minimal, but still getting really great looking footage.